This is a world of fear news. Best stories and reports from around the world of fear. I'm Mitch, and um, did you know that I put all of the dialogue and photos for these videos on my uh, website, tastymitch.com, so you can find all the links there and photos and references. Cheers. Oh God, the news last week uh, was kind of lame. So we should probably just stop this right here. <laughs> just forget about it. I wouldn't do that to you. There's always something to talk about in beer world. If we could just generally avoid talking about politics, that would be great. But first, beer and politics. <laughs> Whether or not you, um, you, you want to make that statement uh, that like your beer represents you um, or if you want to announce what uh, your what's where your company sits on the political defense battle I don't know what we're calling it these days that's up to you uh, there's also people who just want to do the whole keep beer about beer thing um, it's 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 difficult to not be affected by the recent political climates, even here in France. Uh, but I think that for big beer, it is like, it's literally too tempting for them not to catch onto this trending wave. When they see a trend, they have to do it. Uh, I think they're, ABMF is probably working out some way to make an advertising campaign around Beyonce's being pregnant. Um, they're gonna figure that out, I'm sure, because they want to catch on to whatever trend is happening. So this political thing, uh, AB Bev, they couldn't, they had to do something. Uh, so what they did was two, right? We got the Modelo Group, which has all of these beers in it. They did a Spanish commercial, which, which outlines um, how making America great again uh, would mean wrapping together North and South America. Clearly South America is better because, and I quote, they are already, uh, they're, they're already the best dancers and uh, they're the best at football in the world. So that's an interesting campaign mostly because it stereotypicalizes Spanish culture, but it's also referring to this thing that I hear a lot as an American traveler when I say things like, I'm from America. Uh, Canadian people will be like, oh yeah, like what part of America? Northern America? The middle Northern America? You're from the United States of America, which, you know, United, it's a question. <laughs> but I think really in their marketing campaign, what they were doing uh, is they were, they're trying to make it so that no matter what side of the fence you're on, like, so you don't want to drink Corona, you can drink the Budweiser beer because that is, you know, it's also an immigrant beer. So they fictionalize the story of Anheuser and Bush by making them pioneering immigrants. Hey, white folks, you too can be an oppressed immigrant. Woohoo! Which makes it doubly funny that uh, Bush here on the boat, he's speaking English. I want to go um, yeah. he's, he's determined to be an American American. No, I'm so American, I'm gonna respond to you in English. He obviously came to the States because he already spoke English, which is just mostly ridiculous. They also speak English together in the bar, him and Anheuser, which again, it, as an expat, if I'm in a bar, an American walks up to me, I'm not gonna speak French with that person, no matter how much I want to like create a company that's gonna monopolize the entire market of whatever country it is that I just moved over to. And the commercial gets like real silly, it's so silly, because Bush uh, points to a drawing of the future, like Budweiser. Okay, you're a graphic artist. That's great. What, okay, so this is re what really happened. Uh, Bush came and actually married the daughter of Anheuser, and Anheuser had bought the brewery from like another German immigrant years and years and years ago. And then Bush marries his daughter and at one point goes on like a little vacation through Europe. And he goes to the Czech Republic, goes to a brewery, which um, we can say inspired him, the Budweiser Budvar Brewery. <laughs> which he came back and was like, you know what they're doing? It's great, we're gonna take all of it. So maybe that's it. He was just a thieving immigrant, uh, wanted to blend in by speaking the language. I This commercial, I love. I can't wait until the next ad where they um, show how in 2008, the Anheuser-Busch family sold their majority stake to a Belgian company and are now a multinational conglomerate. They don't have a story, they can just make it up. <laughs> Good try.
I think a lot of liberals got upset. I just wanted to be upset, though. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Where was I? But if you want real history, we have the uh, position for the Smithsonian Beer Historian has been filled by this lady. Harvard scholar Teresa McCullough will be taking the newly created role, which seeks to expand the Smithsonian's understanding of uh, the role beer has played and continues to play in American history. So that's great. Beer stuff, we're so sort of legitimate now. <laughs> this is the girl drinking beer out of a coffee mug. Maybe though, here's an idea. If we just had uh, more robots doing things, uh, then things like this wouldn't be such an issue. Like this retro humanoid beer and pizza fetching robot that's made to look like it was constructed from a trash heap. <laughs> Love it. I can't wait to be, to be honest. I want um, animatronic everything. I want it to bring me my beer and drive me places and carry me to my bed and except for this. They don't want this. Shut up, Tostitos. I will order an Uber when I'm ready. Uh, these bags, they're breathalyzers. So if it detects alcohol on your breath and it turns red and you're supposed to call an Uber and you get like a coupon. No. Uh, founder of BeerStreetJournal.com and Stormtrooper, that's what his profile says, uh, quote, the future is now. Delaware's most off-centered brewery, Dogfish Head, has teamed up with Annapolis, Maryland-based AC Beverage in order to create a draft system you've never seen before. The system is called Aerial, an innovative nitrogen-based draft system. We're talking barrel to glass. To be honest, that is exciting. Get excited about that. Okay, so the photo that I did last week was uh, an Israel uh, brewery. Uh, they do a special release. They're pioneering and pillars of their community through beer, but apparently that one was too easy, so skip it. Uh, hopefully you won't be able to get this one. I'm gonna make it a little bit harder. This picture, tell me where it's at. Uh, it's a brewery, it's the first and only craft beer brewery in what remote province of the world? Hmm. They had a recent article in something. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, uh, but it's really interesting. Um, good luck. Good luck to all of that. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'm gonna be more active as well on my uh, Patreon. So I'm gonna be putting exclusive content out there and um, maybe some of these live streaming events are also gonna be private, but we'll see. I don't know, I'm just, it's, I'm rambling, it's tired, I'm drinking. This beer is delicious. I bisou and have a, a great, lovely rest of your life days stuff.